2019 is quickly wrapping up, and there were a lot of Nintendo Switch games released this year, many of which we played on this channel. Some of them were really good, some of them uh, not quite so much. But there are definitely some games that I really enjoyed, games that I thought were just absolutely fantastic that I just feel like not enough people played. So in today's video, I want to highlight some of my favorite games of 2019 that you probably did not play on your Nintendo Switch, but I'm not coming alone. No, sir. I have hired a stupid Australian to help me out with this video. I think his name is Wood beat him up something like that and he's going to talk about some games that he enjoyed this year as well so sit back relax make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's talk about some nintendo switch games that you might have missed out on so i'm going to be nice and let wood start out this video so wood tell me about a game so stupid sean wanted me to talk about a couple of games that came out on switch this year that i love and i feel like not many people picked them up probably maybe unless you watch my videos and you listen to me because <laughs> the first one is Risk of Rain 2. This is a roguelike game for up to four players. You start in a random world and there's random enemies nearby and random pickups. And there's just so many different items in this game that all do very different things. Like you can get an item that chains your attacks together and like lightning bounces off enemies, ones that speed up your attacks, ones that make it so you can double jump, triple jump, all of these items stack. My favorite thing about the items is every time you pick one up, you see it represented on your person. So by the end of the game, not only are you moving and shooting and bouncing around like a souped up superhero, you also look ridiculous as well. As you progress through the worlds, you have to try and find a teleporter on each planet. Once you hit that teleporter, it'll trigger a really hard boss battle, and if you manage to take it down, you get the honor of moving on to the next world, which of course is even harder. The difficulty level slowly ramps up, not only planet to planet, but just while you're playing, all the way from very easy to straight up laughing in your face. The roguelike random nature of it just makes it so addicting and when you get a good team together and you manage to actually blast through the levels and get to the end world, it's really exhilarating. No playthrough is going to feel the same because you're not going to get the same items. Just do me a favor if you do decide to pick it up, don't be that guy that beelines straight for the teleporter and triggers the boss battle instantly. Give me time to pick up the upgrades or else we're all going to lose anyway. So the first game I want to talk about is a game that I can probably put in like my top 20 games of all time. Like it's not a great game, but it's just so much fun. And the Nintendo Switch version is really well done. And I want more people to play this game and I want more people to pick up this game. And yes, it is Friday the 13th. Look people, it is a very unique game on the Nintendo Switch. There's not many games designed with online multiplayer as the main focus. And Friday the 13th is a game that does that. You are either one of the seven camp counselors or you are Jason Voorhees. If you are Jason Voorhees, you are trying to track down the camp counselors and kill them all. If you are one of the camp counselors, you are basically trying to escape from Jason. Now, there's a variety of ways you can do that. You can repair a boat. You can repair a vehicle. You could call on the cops and run away. Or if you're really ballsy, you could try and kill Jason, which requires a different set of tasks in order to do it. It's very tricky to kill Jason. You probably won't kill him all that often, but I just absolutely love this game. I love the perk system in the game as well when you're playing as a counselor. You can basically roll different perks and the more CP you get within the game by playing the game and doing different things like surviving you get more CP in which you can roll more perks that will give you different abilities maybe you can call on the cops a little bit quicker maybe your melee weapons are better maybe your stamina is better each of the individual camp counselors also has their own unique attributes as well so it's definitely fun to switch up and play as different camp counselors and try to find the one counselor that is best suited for you since this is a game that relies heavily on online multiplayer the game actually has native voice chat to where you don't have to do friend codes or have a stupid Nintendo Switch voice app accessory on your cell phone. You can simply just plug into the game and be able to chat with everyone. Teamwork is definitely something very important, but sometimes it's fun to just try and go on your own. Maybe your team is uh, doing a certain task and they're trying to, you know, repair a car or something and Jason goes over there and tries to kill them all. Well, you can maybe escape on the boat. It seems like every different match plays out in a different way. There's a ton of different levels to explore as well. And while they mostly look all the same, it's it's definitely something that is fun to play and I think that's the main thing with Friday the 13th is just how much fun it is to play. I think the game runs and plays really good on the Nintendo Switch. I played this game a lot on the PS4 before it came out on the Nintendo Switch and it definitely feels pretty much the same. The graphics are slightly downgraded but for the most part I think it's a good looking and a good playing game. It has a really good soundtrack as well. There's some weird 80s songs. The summer of heat, the summer of heat, the summer of heat. There's even a Misfits song on there granted it is jerry only on vocals but it's a cool misfit song about friday the 13th 
There's even some single player stuff as well where you can play offline as Jason and go against bots. So I think this is a really good package. It was a game that I ended up getting a review code for, but I enjoyed it so much that I ended up picking up a physical copy as well. Friday the 13th really is a must play on the Nintendo Switch because there's not really anything like it. Well, except Dead by Daylight, but eh, Friday the 13th is much better. Sorry, folks. Next up, I want to talk about one of the Sega Ages games that came out. Sega Ages is, of course, a collection of older Sega games that is brought into the modern era with little nuances and little things done to improve the games. But I feel like the best one has to be the arcade version of Virtual Racing. Now, Virtual Racing was a unique 3D racing game because it was one of the first racing games to use polygons as its visual style. And I still think it holds up today. The game looks very nice and and very crisp when you're playing it on your Nintendo Switch. The game runs at 60 frames per second, and it's just ridiculously smooth playing this game. It's still a lot of fun as well because of the price point of the game. The game is very cheap to pick up, and since arcade racers usually sort of lack depth, I think it's definitely a good thing that this game is cheap because it's something that you could just simply pick up and play and have a lot of fun with it. There's online leaderboards for tracks. There's online racing as well. You can actually do up to eight players total in local co-op mode as well, whether it's on your TV or even when you're in Nintendo Switch is in handheld mode. Yes, I'm serious. And somehow the visual fidelity is still really good. Like I said, it's an arcade racer, so it's not a super deep racing game. You can pretty much do everything in the game within an hour or so, but it's definitely fun to try and improve your lap times and try and find little things to make your course go faster and make your racer go faster as well. It's a super fun game, and since it's so cheap and it is arguably the definitive port of virtual racing, I can't recommend this game enough. Head on over to the Nintendo Switch eShop if you're a fan of arcade racing racing games and go ahead and pick up Virtual Racer, one of my surprise games of 2019. When there's something strange in your neighborhood, who are you going to call? Don't don't call me, I man. Paranormal stuff freaks me out. But no, Ghostbusters the Video Game Remastered is yet another awesome Nintendo Switch game that you need to buy. You seriously need to buy it. Once again, you can always tell when a game is really good when I get a review copy of it and then I still pick it up physically because Ghostbusters the Video Game Remastered is just an awesome, awesome video game. If you have any sort of nostalgia or any sort of fandom for the Ghostbusters universe, you need to own this game. It basically is the third Ghostbusters movie the third proper Ghostbusters movie with the original cast reprising their roles. You, got, you have Ernie Hudson, you have Dan Aykroyd, you have Bill Murray and Harold Ramis reprising their roles for the Ghostbusters game. And it's seriously just a fantastic game. It's not a super long game. You could beat the game in about eight hours or so, but I absolutely love what this game brings to the table because it really sort of mimics that Ghostbusters style. There was sort of scary parts in Ghostbusters, but there was lighthearted stuff in Ghostbusters. There was funny moments in Ghostbusters. And this game does an absolutely fantastic fantastic job of replicating that same sort of theme. Of course, this game was actually written by Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis as far as the script is concerned, so it really truly is like the third Ghostbusters movie. The visual style in the game is very nice and very clean. I still think this game definitely holds up today. I think the visual style is very clean. There's some really cool effects going on, such as the proton packs and whatnot. When you're reeling in these ghosts, the gameplay is really fun as well. There's some very interesting boss battles. There's one boss battle that's really, really cheap though, but all the other boss battles are really fun but it's just such a unique game it's a really fun game and it's a game that i feel does have some replay value in just the fact that it's like watching a ghostbusters movie you could sit there and watch a ghostbusters movie and then two weeks later watch it again because you enjoyed it so much and i feel like this game offers that same sort of replayability there's also a patch coming for online multiplayer in the game that has not been released yet, but at a $30 price point, I still think the game, even without the multiplayer, is definitely worth getting into. If you have any sort of nostalgia for Ghostbusters, you really need to check out Ghostbusters the Video Game Remastered because it's just a fantastic port of a great game that should have been the third movie in the Ghostbusters franchise. All right, I think Stupid Wood wants to talk about another game. Wood, what do you got? You know, me thinks that maybe not many people would have picked up New Super Lucky's Tale, despite my video where I tried my best to explain that it's not actually a port of that Xbox One game, it's a brand new Lucky's Tale game in the franchise. Kind of. It really doesn't even feel like the same. Some levels maybe share similarities, and maybe some of the really fun levels were left untouched, other than maybe a visual overhaul, but for the most part, it's all brand new. Including the controls and the camera. It's not a fixed camera anymore, you can actually spin that sucker all the way around to your heart's content. And the gameplay has been refined, and it's silky smooth like butter. It just really is. The way that you dive in and out of the ground and chain it together, it flows like a dolphin swimming in the 
see. Lucky is so inherently fun to control that all they really had to do from there is just give fun and engaging levels for us to play around in, like a big playground. And that's exactly what they did. You have side-scrolling levels, you have marble madness levels, you have puzzle levels, you have your traditional 3D platforming levels, of course, but each kind of level is as fun as the last and it helps keep it fresh throughout the entire game. You get what I'm going for. I'm trying to be quick, I'm trying not to ramble, but I love this game so much I can't help it. I do have a whole video about it on my channel if I could shameless plug for a second, so I guess I'll leave it at that. Say thanks for having me on the channel. You too, Sean. Nah. Uh, bye. <laughs> The next game I want to talk about was one of my biggest surprises for 2019. I'm a man who likes racing games, obviously we already talked about Virtual Racer, but when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, most of the racing games are arcade racers. Well, pretty much all of them are. There's really no simulation style games aside from Gear Club Unlimited, which just isn't really that good. But here comes Feral Interactive, who is honestly one of the best port makers on the Nintendo Switch right now with Grid. And Grid is just absolutely awesome. I reviewed Grid a couple months ago on the channel but I've still been playing the game because there's just so much content there are so many different race styles and different race types to do in this game it just keeps surprising me with how much fun I'm having with this game basically there's five main disciplines of racing that you get into there's tuning cars there's old cars there's drag cars there's all sorts of stuff that you're trying to do within this game you're basically trying to complete seasons and get your rank up and as your rank gets higher you have access to more different seasons that you can access of course besides that there's single player races where you can just do simple races there's there's things like Demolition Derby, which is ridiculously fun and reminds me of Destruction Derby on the PS1. There's just so much content in this game and it really feels like a proper racing sim, which is the Nintendo Switch has been really lacking ever since it came out. And I think that's what makes this game stand out. I really wish they would have done a physical edition of this game because I would have picked it up again gladly. Feral Interactive also released Alien Isolation, which could probably make this list as well, but it just came out like two days ago at the time of the filming of this. But I feel like Feral Interactive Active is a company that needs more respect on the Nintendo Switch. Between Grid and Alien Isolation, these are two fantastic ports on the Nintendo Switch, and if you're a simulation racing fan who's been craving something good, craving something like Forza or Gran Turismo, Grid is the game you need to pick up on your Nintendo Switch. And the final game is a game that got screwed at the Game Awards. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Look at the fighting category at the Game Awards 2019. Jump Force, really? That, that game didn't review well. But a game that should have been on the fight category and one of my biggest surprises of 2019 is Power Rangers Battle for the Grid and Power Rangers Battle for the Grid is really just a Marvel vs. Capcom game with Power Rangers characters in it and that to me is absolutely awesome I grew up watching the Power Rangers I think Tommy vs. Jason, the two-part episode, is one of the greatest pieces of television of all time. It was a gripping story and just so much cool stuff in there. And they really did a great job with Power Rangers Battle for the Grid because Power Rangers games have kind of sucked lately. Like, there was a stupid 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up game that just looked very cheap and like a Flash game. But Power Rangers Battle for the Grid is an awesome fighting game that, like I said, plays a lot like Marvel vs. Capcom. You do a three-on-three -three style fighting where you can tag in and out with different characters. There's Megazord attack that you could do in the game as well that really changed the tide of the battle and can help you. They've included a lot of content since the initial release of the game as well. They've included free content like new characters. There's also a season pass with the game as well to get new characters. There's new levels you can play on and there's of course a story mode that's been added to the game as well that is also free to get into. The game definitely lacked some content when it first came out and that's kind of why it got sort of poorish reviews and I even said that in my video like I felt like the game lacked content but the gameplay itself was just absolutely awesome. It's so much fun to play this game because it's a fighting game that is accessible to everyone. It, the game does have a pick up and play style to where anyone can pick it up and check it out and have some fun with it, but there's a lot of deeper mechanics in this game as well that are worth exploring, such as combos to improve your characters. There's online play that you could play as well and fight other people online. Just such a fantastic game top to bottom and it's criminally underrated. Once again, this was another game that I got a review copy for, but not only did I buy the physical edition of the game, I bought the freaking collector's edition of the game because I enjoyed it that much. If you're looking for a great fighting game on the Nintendo Switch, Mortal Kombat 11 is definitely one of them. But if you're looking for something a little bit different, a little bit more like a Marvel vs. Capcom style, Power Rangers Battle for the Grid is definitely a game you should check out and I highly recommend it for fans of fighting games.
All right, so those are some of my favorite games of 2019 that came out on the Nintendo Switch that I really enjoyed playing. I want to thank Stupid Wood for helping out with this video. He has like 800,000 subscribers. You're probably already subscribed to him. If you're not, his co his channel will be in the comment section down below in the pinned comment. Make sure you guys go check him out. But yeah, let me know some of the games of 2019 that you enjoyed that you feel like not enough people talked about and not enough people played. And as always, folks, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel and as always i'll catch you guys on the next one later